Second Self is the fourth book in the Star Trek Picard series, centered on Commander Rafi Musiker, Picard's former second command during the Romulan evacuation after the conclusion of Season 1. Lost and uncertain where she fits, she is asked by JL to find a Cardassian fugitive in the colony of Ordeve, a place she had hoped never again to go. Set in the Star Trek universe between the first and second seasons of Star Trek Picard, we see more gaps filled in on one of the franchise's most interesting characters, Rafi Musiker. Sent to the colony of Ordeve, we see the colony in two separate time frames, telling the story of Rafi's history with this troubled world and where she is headed next. Centered around Rafi, she is tasked by Picard on helping to resolve an outstanding issue among the Bajorans. The problem is that to do so, she must go to a world that had seen strange things befall everyone that lived there. Caught between a struggle among the Romulans, the Cardassians, and the Bajorans that once lived on the planet, she must navigate complex political waters between them and find the man she has been sent to retrieve, all the while appearing not to be after anyone. Rafi Musiker is without a purpose. Between jobs, she has nowhere to go. But there are offers. She could go to the Academy and teach, or she could return to Starfleet Intelligence. Unsure if she is still cut out for that sort of work, JL suggests she carry out a mission for them to test the waters. There's just one problem. It will require her to wade through her own past full of open wounds to do so. So I'll start by saying that this book is not what I expected. I've been eagerly awaiting a tale centered on Rafi since Picard started, and it definitely delivered. Making great use of the majority of the Picard cast, it crafted an interesting story set in the current version of the Prime timeline. With the revival of Trek, it meant that the majority of the books written in the last two decades were now in the Splinter timeline, with the ultimate effect being that for the vast majority of the universe, we were starting over. The story is told in five parts, each taking place at a different point on the planet. Starting in the present, Rafi has been tasked by her former mentor and problematic friend Jean-Luc Picard. Faced with the task of tracking down a known war criminal on a planet with a complex political history, Rafi accepts the assignment reluctantly with Elnor in tow. The story does a good job of highlighting Rafi's eternal struggle to figure out where she needs to be. Despite her best efforts, she's always finding herself in complicated situations, usually coming with a heavy personal cost. We also see a touch of her issues with substance abuse, as on this world, there is a substance that seems to cause unusual dreams. I'd call the story a well-layered mystery, with the bits coming out in dribs and drabs as you follow the narrative, starting in the present time, and going back to earlier days on Ardeev when the situation was just as complicated. Over the course of the adventure, we follow Rafi through both of her journeys on this planet, and learn a lot more about Rafi herself. I can't say too much without spoiling details, but suffice it to say that when the ending came, it took me by surprise. It was not, at least at first, something I was certain I understood, but in hindsight it all makes sense. I'd say that if you're a fan of the new Star Trek, you'll probably enjoy this piece, especially so if you're a Rafi fan. I'd say it's a different kind of Star Trek adventure, but one that I think tells a good story and makes good use of the Picard setting. I highly recommend it. If you like werewolves, check out my book Blue Moon, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, click the subscribe button and leave a comment below. Catch you later.